Hi. So the other day I got a question and it was, I'm going to be doing this particular inspection. Um, how many GCPs do I need? And I was like, well, actually for that particular project, you don't really need GCPs or ground control points. And the thing is, GCPs are really important and they have a place in the industry, but they're not really needed for every single inspection or every single survey. So what I, what I want to do in this particular video is I want to go through ground control points and have a both high level and an in-depth view into explaining what they are, why they matter, and therefore trying to build an intuitive understanding of what use cases they really, really matter for. Let's have a look. Hey everyone, I'm Varun for Amazon Missions. And in this particular video, what I wanna do is I wanna break down ground control points, also known as GCPs. So let's start with what are GCPs? So GCPs essentially are a method used to create highly accurate drone surveys, whether it's maps or models. And in this particular method, what happens is you put these checkerboard style markers or any type of markers on the ground that you're trying to survey and you understand or record the known position using a base station or GPS equipment. So once again, you put down these markers on the ground and you record their GPS positions. What you then do is you fly your drone over a particular site and you essentially correlate the known positions from the base station or your GPS receiver with the photos that were used by the drone and try to essentially put all of that information together into one map or model so that the drone images can be corrected and be, can be put in the right places. So you might ask, why do we need GCPs? Well, that's because GPS on a drone, typically without using RTK, can have error anywhere between one meter all the way to two meters. And so the right way to think about when a drone flies over a particular site and is taking those images is that all of those images, even though they're geotagged, the actual position of the drone may be up to one meter away. So if you've got a drone flying over a site, one way to think about your drone is that there's a bubble around the drone where the images are reporting the drone to be in those geotagged images. So therefore, if you use those particular images to create a map or a model, they may or may not be accurate in terms of aligning with the base reality. So what you really want is some known method some known coordinates that can be used to put the map or model in the right place. An analogy that I like to use over here is that if you think about a poster board and let's say you want to pin a map to a poster board or you want to, let's say there's a map you want to essentially put down on a, on a board. And so to be able to essentially put up a map on a board, you might need pins to put it in the right place and to hold it in the right place and to essentially align it to so that it's exactly flat with that surface. So those pins are essentially these GCPs or ground control points which are needed to essentially create an accurate map or model that you can take measurements for and you can use for survey and inspection work when it's required. Now, when do we really need GCPs? So I think the way to think about this is that it all depends on what the use case is and what the actual outcome of the project is. If you're doing something in survey and inspection, if you're doing something that is going to be working with architects, engineers, or contractors, and if you're doing something that's going to be essentially something that ends up in a BIM environment or, an, or a construction environment where it's going to be used to essentially create new plans, you want that accuracy. However, if you're actually looking at something that is already built and you're essentially looking at sort of surveying it to understand its condition, maybe at that point you don't need that level of accuracy with respect to measurements. So it all depends on what the drone data is going to be used for. And as is the case with everything in the industry, it really pays to understand why your customer is looking for that data. And if it's the former where they want to build something using that data, it needs to be accurate and GCPs have a place. When if it's the latter and they just want to understand the condition, maybe GCPs are an overkill. So really bear that in mind. Okay, so now that we have established what GCPs are and when do you need to use them, let's have a look at What's the best way to place GCPs on your site? So the best way to place GCPs on your site is to essentially follow a rule of thumb where you want to have at least three to five GCPs for small projects. 
and you want to have at least five GCPs per square kilometer in a large project. So essentially you want to have enough GCPs to be able to give yourself those enough pins to be able to put the, the map on the, on the board in the right place. But you also don't want to overdo it because obviously putting GCPs and ensuring that they are visible in the images can be a laborious process. So there's a balance to strike here. So three to five GCPs for small projects and then for larger projects, having something like five GCPs per square kilometer. And then the other big thing to, to bear in mind is where do you actually put the GCPs? So if you think about that sort of map on a, on a, or a poster on a board example that I talked about, what you really want to do is you want to first get the corners in the right place. So if you think about that map, you want to put the corners in all, you want to put the pins in the corners as, uh, as best as possible. And then you also want to fill out the center. You want to make sure that you've got uniformity in terms of distribution. So you don't have some part of the map very pinned down and other, map, other parts of the map completely empty. So you want to have some uniform distribution of these GCPs across the map. And you also want to make sure that whilst you're pinning down the corners, your GCPs are not so far in the, in the corners that they actually get missed out of the drone survey themselves. So you might want to sort of actually get GCPs slightly inside the corners. So over here, I'm showing two different types of survey areas with very complex shapes. And what you can see is that we've got GCPs placed in the right way and also in the wrong way, which sort of like gives you an idea for what to aim for when it comes to GCPs. Right, okay. So <clears throat> assuming you understand now how GCPs are going to be placed, what do you actually do with them? So firstly, like GCPs are these checkerboard style uh, markers. But you can also use um, spray paint to essentially create your own GCP. Uh, you can use uh, other types of uh, markers that are available off the shelves. Really, you can use anything that will be identifiable in a drone image. What you want is not so much the GCP. You want to be able to recognize that point later on in the image. So a marker could be any marker. As long as this, it's visible in the drone image, you're, you're free to use it. So. Um, and then the question becomes, once you put these GCPs around the site in the right place, where, how do you actually go about your workflow? So generally what you want to do is you want to take a base station, something like uh, an Mlet RS2 or maybe a DJI base station 2 or a Trimble base station. And you want to use that to be able to measure the coordinate of your GCP. It could be that you already have these coordinates available if you're working with a surveyor and there's a known point on that particular site. But if you don't have that, that point available, you can essentially go and measure it. And you want to measure all of these different GCPs and you want to maintain a list of all of those coordinates that have been measured. What you'll typically end up with is that you'll end up with a file, namely a CSV file or a TXT file. And this file will essentially have all the different prere prerequisite data to be able to do your survey. So you might have, for example, all of the GCP names, you might have all the coordinates, and you might also have essentially uh, the latitude, longitude, altitude, and sometimes you can also include um, the error in terms of the, the um, measurement. So you have that CSV file, and what you need to do now is that you need to upload this CSV file alongside your drone images into a software platform that does photogrammetry and can essentially put all of this together. Uh, we at Hammer Missions have, have got a GCP mode where you are uploading images, 2D images or 3D uh, images, uh, created using a single grid or a double grid. You can upload all these images, plus you can upload the CSV file. And what you'll get at the end of it is that you'll get essentially a highly accurate map or a model which has been geo-positioned or geo-referenced correctly with respect to the base reality. So you can do that. And one of the things that you have to do in those workflows is that you have to not only provide the GCP, but you also have to provide the positions of the pixels of those GCPs in the image. Now, that whole workflow, uh, I've made a whole video on how to do that because it does require a sort of a visual component to it. So if you wanna go watch that workflow, we've got a link to that video here. But essentially you've got that CSV file, you've got the data set from the drone and you just upload all of it and then you're able to get your map or model to be highly accurate with respect to georeferencing. Now, one thing I should mention here is that GCPs tend to help with georeferencing accuracy or absolute accuracy. And that type of accuracy is slightly different to relative accuracy, uh, which has got to do more with measurements accuracy. So uh, let me just explain that quickly. So 
Absolute accuracy essentially means how accurate is your map or model with respect to base reality or with respect to known ground truths. And so essentially, how well does it align with other maps or models or the base reality? And this type of accuracy is really important in getting your alignments right with respect to your map and model, especially if you're doing continuous surveys. So if you're serving the same site over and over again, you want to make sure that all those maps and models align, then you need to have this, this sort of absolute accuracy as high as possible. Whereas the relative accuracy has got to do more with how accurate is the model, even if it doesn't align with the rest of the world or the base reality. Because if you think about it, a map or model can still be internally consistent. It can still allow you to make measurements that are correct. They may just not align correctly with the base reality. So two different things. Uh, I've actually made a whole video on two different types of accuracy. It's important to understand that GCPs typically tend to affect absolute accuracy. And so with respect to the measurement accuracy, or relative accuracy, what you need is GSD, which is a different concept, and you want to make sure that's also as uh, as low as possible or as um, high as possible, depending on whether or not you look at GSD as being high or low. So you want to make sure that your both your accuracies are as high as possible, and and that's how you would essentially use your GCPs um, to be able to get a highly accurate data set. Right, okay, so we went through a lot of things over here. We looked at what are GCPs. We looked at why do you need them. Uh, we looked at how do you place GCPs on your site? How do you measure the coordinates? How do you upload that data back into a platform that can process all that for you? And then finally, I think the last thing to mention here is that there's also now an emerging concept of essentially tie points or checkpoints where you can use not just your GCP data to generate a highly accurate map or model, you can also partition your GCPs so that you have a set of GCPs that are used to actually create the map or model that is accurate, but then also a set of GCPs that are not used to create that map, but used to essentially correct or used to check or verify that map for accuracy. So um, these are essentially uh, just the same as GCPs, but they're just a separated set of GCPs that you can use to understand the and verify the accuracy of your data set. So all in all, um, hopefully this video was useful in understanding GCPs a bit more and hopefully some of our illustrations bring to life what GCPs can and cannot do. Um, as, as I mentioned at the very start of this video, you don't need GCPs for every project and there's also a big debate about do you need GCPs if you've got RTK or if you're doing PPK? So, you know, we've kind of seen drones go through this particular sort of uh, movement where most drones that are coming out these days have RTK, so they have better positioning. And there might be arguments to say that GCPs might become a thing of the past because the accuracy of the GPS uh, themselves that are embedded on these new drones is so high. Um, but I think that GCPs in the interim still have a role to play. And it's really important to make sure that they are there as a fallback mechanism in case you can't get RTK on site. And in case there are other issues which might sort of prevent you from using RTK or PPK, uh, for instance, uh, if you if you don't have an RTK drone on hand. So, um, but overall, hopefully the concept uh, that GCPs represent, which is aligning your drone map with base reality, is somewhat clearer now. And whether you achieve it through GCPs, RTK, or PPK, uh, that's something that you can always decide depending on the equipment you have. We made a video on how to actually think about these three different ways of uh, of looking at accuracy. And uh, uh, in that video, me and one of my colleagues, we essentially uh, debate which method might be the best method uh, going forward. So if you want to go check out that video, feel free to. Right, hopefully this was useful. Um, if you've got any comments about GCPs, anything you think that is still not clear that we should cover, please do let us know. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, uh, do give us a like. Uh, and if you think that someone else might benefit from watching this video, please feel free to share. And as always, if you've got some particular topic you would like us to cover, please do let us know. We're always interested in, in, uh, in what you think. Uh, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video for Knowledge Hub.